Uh, it's my pleasure. Yes. Thank you for letting me make it. I had so much fun. Oh my gosh, it's stunning. It's stunning. <laughs> oh, here he is. Sander, welcome. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so fun. I, I love romanticizing the words too. Just getting lost in them. Yes, me too. Just bathing in it. <laughs> it is. It's kind of erotic. It's just making love through everything. It's beautiful. Every sound, sensation, emotion feeling God, it's so good to see all of you, you here. Leela and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, let's do a Zoom. Let's see if anybody shows. For no reason. <laughs> I can't say no to Michael. <laughs> no intention. No purpose. No goal. Freedom Already is the title of the Zoom. Freedom Already. So everybody's invited to speak. Hey, Leela, you're so amazing. You're on here twice. Oh, my goodness. My phone, my computer messed up, so I had to switch to my phone. Okay, no problem. So it's double the play. <laughs> Is Nkosi going to make it, Michael? I don't know. I, I sent him a link, and he said it was appreciated with love. Oh. So. Yeah, already free. Even the pain and the suffering and the drama. I like what Jenny says, seeking freedom is freedom seeking. The beloved longing for the beloved. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, the beloved looking for itself. 
How sweet. Where am I? Which one is the real me? It's not that the separation goes away. It's that there never was any separation. Leela, girlfriend, you still there? Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, just checking. We can, can I'm we... sorry, I'm, I'm having technical issues. Oh. Um, yeah, I don't even know if I'm on the screen. No, you're, there's an image of an uh, eye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can read what I wrote here. If, yeah. If you don't mind. Go for it. There are no standards for this, to be already free. That's what unconditional means. Not dependent upon conditions. Whether or not it's recognized, that too is this, playing. A game called I'm Lost. Life-loving stories of hide and seek, me and you, confusion and clarity. They're made out of the same thing, nothing. Dancing as creative expression for no one at all, for the sake of chaotic freedom. Not needing this to appear in any certain way Telling a story of seeking is freedom itself. This is already free of right and wrong, should and should not. Already free to arise and fall as it does. Nothing in this freedom to hold on to. And nothing to hold on. So freely willing even to appear as unwilling or having will. Free to appear as an epic drama, the hero's journey. Free to be light or dark, all the colors of the rainbow. Already free to be. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, my God. Yay, we got a live Leela reading. Yay. Yay. <laughs> wow. I'm going to leave the meeting and come back, Michael, so I can fix this. You my got computer. it. Yeah, no okay. problem.
Leela's trying to get in. There she is. Yay. <laughs> I was I was writing that down uh, earlier, and I was thinking of when I heard uh, people talk about how this isn't authentic unless it's spouted out just on the on the spot uh, on the moment. And I was just thinking about how ridiculous that is. <laughs> uh, this can be. This can spontaneously appear as not spontaneous too apparently yeah it's so literal everything means everything literally and there's no things. You know, it's like Sander says on his chan channel, it, it's it's not two, which we've most of us have heard, and he adds the tagline, not even one, because who would know that? We really can't conceive of nothing, can we? Well, not even nothing, I would say. Yeah. Not even nothing we can conceive. And this is free to be claiming that authenticity is only in a certain way or not, or both or neither. This is free to claim that this is not authenticity or it isn't. I mean, calling something authenticity or not is already just simply this and not even this. There isn't a thing which can be authentical or not. Just a bunch of bodies talking, like birds chirping, dogs barking, flowers blooming, rain falling, sun shining. It's already just innocently this, as is the claim that it is innocently this already. The law for this is this already? There's no one separated to love this or to hate this at the same time. This is it. Words, beliefs, claims, suggestions. And this so-called love to meet and greet may just simply vanish. 
shift into the absence of the love to come here or the interest to come here. The love to go to this meeting may shift into the love to watch Netflix <laughs> with my wife or go over to my parents' house and watch a movie. But that is not what seems to be happening. What seems to be happening is just this. And there is not even a thing happening. Thank you, Sander. That was beautiful. Thank you, sweetheart. I'm glad you're not watching Netflix, Sander. <laughs> well, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Maybe one day there will be gladness if this guy is watching Netflix instead of coming <laughs> to the meeting. And it's as innocent as the statement I'm not... I'm liking that you're not watching Netflix. It's already just what it is, innocent. Yeah, there's a love to be here. But this love is not my love. Nor is there anyone in this love. Or besides this love. Or beyond this love or beneath this love. There's no one to hold this. There's no one to hold love, to get love, to receive love, to trap love. That's just love. And there isn't even love. You're such a sweetheart, Leela, I'm making all those beautiful, well, how do you call those things? Featured Thank videos, I, I call them. Featured videos. Features videos, yes, beautiful. <laughs> I can't help it. No. <laughs> I mean, there's no one able to help himself or herself in the absence of are you separated from this? So some may seem to say that's just the self. Calling this the self or God or energy or awareness is already just this. There's no one besides this to help this, to contain this. To get this, grasp this. You're trying to get this may happen. Going to meetings, closing eyes to suck it up. There's nothing to suck up. <laughs> Sitting and concentrating and listening to the words is just simply this. And it will bring nothing. And not even nothing it will bring. There's no you able to get this, to suck it up. Mm -hmm. 
but they're trying to suck this up and to take it in is already just innocently this. Already not two, neither one. Just this. Thank you, brother. Beautiful. Thank you, brother. Thank you for you and Lila doing this. Lila, doing this show. Sorry, Lila. Such a beautiful name, Lila. That's just Lila, right, Michael? Play. That's just the play. There are no players in this. Just to play as a bunch of players. Playing like kids innocently. Running after the butterfly, trying to catch it. A stunning masterpiece for no one. <laughs> And you can't escape this. <laughs> and even the attempt to escape this is this. I like the word futility. <clears throat> Tell us what's <laughs> so beautiful about the word. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's uh, it it it's like free fall. You know, no escape. Can't escape. Uh, the love, there's no one to escape it. Yeah, it's so crazy that trying to escape the love <laughs> would be the love. I just remembered in Star Trek, um, the Borg saying over and over again, resistance is futile. Resistance <laughs> is futile. And I was like, oh my God, that's so deep. <laughs> back in the, you know, back when I first saw it. And yeah, <laughs> it is. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's why I made that post the other day of the robot just in a pile, just in a heap of parts, like the whole thing just breaks down under its own weight, you know, and you're just left with nothing. I was going to say, uh, Dini, you said that in the, uh, the resistance is futile, but resistance is also inescapable, so. <laughs> Well, it's, it's futile. That's my thought. <laughs> it's just a thought. <laughs> so my mouth opened and my tongue moved and there you are. <laughs> <laughs> just part of the play. Mm -hmm. Of that which doesn't exist to appear to. That's perfect. It's like a magnet with the attractive side and the, you know, repelling. It's like a, it's one magnet. Wow. 
I would say it's futile in the sense that it's already what it is. The claim that it's futile or not is already just simply this. In the same way, it's hopeless. It's hopelessly this already. And hope doesn't need hope. Or hope to be already just hopelessly this. Hopeless love. Michael Markham, are you writing things down? Uh, I am uh, thinking about responses or reactions to what has been said and trying to uh, articulate the things that bubble up here in, in these types of conversations. Um. The first thing that came to mind was that we exist only in thought and that thought itself is separatist. There's no freedom in thought. It's freedom is just another word. Um, there's no escape for us in, in thinking because we are, we emerge within the thinking process within the objectification of the world. There's no freedom in that. There's no hope for freedom. There is another peculiar thing that happens to some people that includes embracing the human condition or maybe is embracing the human condition and its limitations is that we cannot think outside of the box. We are the box. Everything ever said about this is it is another idea that emerges within the objectifying brain or objectification. There's no way that we can capture whatever we think this is by using the mechanism out of which the confusion emerges. We're using words to try to find the deeper meaning of words. We're trying to figure out who and what we are by using the very mechanism that causes the confusion, which is thought. There's no way out. There can be from the perspective here, an embracing of our limitations. And somehow the world opens up into an unimaginable overlay full of beauty and love, or that feeling of love, or whatever love is. I think it's a chemical reaction but it's the best chemical reaction we can experience or the brain can experience. I think love evolved because without it, life as a human being would be too difficult. It emerged as a compensation for objectification. The neighbor's wife, who do we dearly love, just died yesterday. She fell down the stairs and hit her head and bled to death. I miss her. I loved her. 
Maybe that's tribal. I don't know, and I don't care. Maybe the first million, hundred million years we spent in small tribes, if we lost a member of our tribe, our life was in jeopardy. The bowl maker, the fire starter, the storyteller were part of us as a tribe. Our tribe is larger now. Our tribe is the non-dual group. If one of you were to die, I would be heartbroken. And any one of us can die at any moment. That makes life so precious. We're all dangling by a thread. My daughter-in-law came across a motorcycle, first on scene of a terrible motor motorcycle accident, young man. Badly broken, legs askew, uh, bleeding from the mouth, eyes blinking. And uh, the shock of that, 29 years old, he died. 29. I'm 81. I'm grateful for every moment now. I'm grateful that you're here or appear to be in my world. Thank you, Michael, for having this meeting. And thank you, Leela. Oh, what love. Look at the hearts. That's the way I feel when I look at people. I see a galaxy of memories. Some of them good, some bad, some sad, some happy. Oh, you loves. Look at you. <laughs> Just a second, Michael. I think Sander had his finger up at one point. Ah, uh, okay. I will. I will mute myself. <laughs> well, if there was a me, I would. I would get lost in the lobby dubby do story. Um, well, yeah, claiming this to be objectification is just another objectification. I mean, there's just no way to it. And yes, you know, having love for people and caring for them and crying when they die or not it's just what's happening as far as it seems as far as it is believed as far as it is suggested i don't want to call this a tribe But yes, calling this a tribe, calling this a community, it doesn't matter. Calling this a philosophy group, a gathering, a cult, a meeting, a bunch of idiots, it's already just this, <laughs> as is the love, as is the claim that everyone's life is hanging on the thread and that any moment a moment this can stop well the beauty is the so-called life or whatever you want to call it already never started for you nor will it end for you there was already no you for whom this so-called life started and for whom this so-called life will end But that doesn't mean that the idea or the sense this will end for me quickly or not may not arise. This is free to be the fear of death and the absence of the fear of death. This is free to be this is my life or the absence of that sensation or belief or feeling or whatever you want to call it. It's already just simply what it is. Birds jog, chirping, body stalking, dogs barking, grass growing, flowers blooming, and the sun shining. There's a phrase called word salad. Um... I'm not sure it's part of the lexicon around the world or not. 
But I think there is, uh, among some speakers, a tendency to to ramble on about what they think this is, and some call it this is it, uh, as if there were an it. Um, I suppose it's all word salad. Essentially, that means meaningless mumbo jumbo about a condition that doesn't actually exist and that no one knows or can know who or what we are, what's happening, looking through the lens of an objectifying brain who has names for everything. We live in a world of names. I think part of the brain can recognize that and embrace that as the human condition, which is just another perspective of the world, different than that of bats, cats, foxes, deer, butterflies, dragonflies. Every sentient organism has a different world. But again, that's word salad. It's mumbo jumbo, guessing, shooting arrows at the moon, stacking shadows. It isn't that you're left with nothing and not even nothing. Nothing is just another word. It's a meaningless word. And all we have is words and all we are is words as personas. I think if there is such a thing as freedom, it's knowing that nothing can be known, including that. Living, I think it's possible to live spontaneously like a child. I feel like a child most of the time. I want to play with people, and I do. An elderly man walking by, I'll say, how are you? I'm okay. I'll say, you want to wrestle? <laughs> says, what? I said, you and me, you want to wrestle? He said, I'm afraid I'd hurt you. I said, I don't think so. I'm tougher than I look. And then we start to laugh. And then we, we play like little boys with words. I think words is the greatest gift in the universe. I think to be human is the greatest gift in the universe. There's nothing like us anywhere. Evolution never repeats itself. Only reason mammals are here because the dinosaurs got blasted out with a comet. We evolved into this naked ape in the plains of Africa. Up through the Middle Ages, and the, or for the Ice Ages, and then the Middle Ages, and here we are. Just a chance in a in a trillion, billion, million. There's nobody like us in the universe. If they manage to get here, they'll want to kill us. They're not here to help us build pyramids and crop circles. <laughs> Dang, Michael, you are a roller coaster ride, brother. Are oh, you, love? I will be quiet now. I want to say that I love Leela. I think she's uh, precious, but I think every one of you is precious. But I've resonated with everything she's ever said, and I appreciate her videos so much. Oh, thank you, Michael. <laughs> My brain loves your brain. You're such a sweetheart, Michael. Michael, 
Markham. <laughs> I just want to say, I, I cannot say that the words mattered. It's to me, it's like a kiss, the sun falling on the skin and a, a, a caress of love, absolutely. There's no erroneous thought. It's just like, you know, uh, to me, just a picture of a, a rose came up and there's no, doesn't say how many spikes it should have to protect itself and how many petals. The scent of the, the rose is what I hear when you speak. So I don't care that it's a story and it's not non-dual, it's just, it's just gorgeous. So I just wanted to, to say that. Uh -oh. <laughs> Beautiful. And when I was closing my eyes earlier on, uh, I drove about five hours yesterday and I'm <laughs> recovering from the, the long journey. Yeah, so. Oh, sweetheart, so, there's nothing wrong with closing eyes. Don't worry. <laughs> well, I know, I know I didn't try to open them. <laughs> Closing eyes is just closing eyes saying yeah. I'm sorry for this or that is already just simply this. No worries. Closing your eyes. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mm. so natural to close these eyes. Try mm. to hold them open. I promise you it will not work. No, <laughs> I, I, could, I can easily have uh, cat naps. I don't know if you know the term. Mm. So I can be busy all, all day long. I, I used to play music for some dancing and then you'd go to a pub for a meal and my eyes just shut and it looks, people think I'm asleep, but it's like the, it's like the body sleeping or, or fully, you know, hearing the sounds. And uh, so the body's way to rest and recover fully is just amazing. If there's such a thing as a body. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, with these talks, it's like, wow, you know, there's no no real body, and uh, and now it's just a pleasure. It doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter if there's a body or not, or if there's separation or not. It's just like, wow. It's uh, there's no. I can't even end my sentence. So, <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, Catherine. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for inviting me, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And seeing everybody on here. Mm -hmm. Well, wasn't everyone invited? <laughs> Was this not uh, an invitation to everyone? Or is this a special, is this only for special so-called characters to to come here? Only the special ones. I mean, which there are not. There's no one special already. No, no one's been invited, you know, and you're all me as well. You know, the nothing with different faces and that. <laughs> Just a point the uh, the eyes you can't you can't close the eyes the eyes never close it's just that the eyelid goes down and covers the eye so the eyes are never closed yes like the the sun doesn't go away it's just a cloud comes in front <laughs> <laughs> spot on Don. What a clarity there. Oh my God. 
Beautiful. Close your eyes, and I don't know the rest of the words. <laughs> <laughs> we just saw the little girl come out. <laughs> You're so beautiful. Catherine. I just want to show something else that's beautiful. Hang on. <laughs> Indoor tomatoes. Have you ever made fried green tomatoes, Catherine? Fried green tomatoes. No, yeah. we we don't we don't have tomatoes in England. We only have tomatoes. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but no, I've tomatoes. never tried. I've never tried. <laughs> <laughs> never tried that. Oh, I, I have do that because I, I don't <laughs> think I don't think they'll ripen much more. So you have Ginia yeah? fried. That's green a southern tomatoes. thing. Yeah, Leela. Ah. Leela and I are in the south. We were raised on that stuff <laughs> and fried okra, everything fried. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yeah, you can look up the recipe, Catherine. Yes, I can do. Yeah. <laughs> So a question I'm thinking of is, can nothingness be alive? Well, tell me, Don, can it be? It, it feels that way. Well, that's it. I mean, it's hard to know. And even that is a knowing. It feels as it feels. If you can't put it on the table, it doesn't exist. It's imaginary. Both feeling and emptiness and nothingness exist only as ideas. It's hard to figure out what things that exist only as ideas relate to each other. They aren't real. Yeah, I love the imagination there, Michael. Right, it's all imagined. Oh, I yeah, I I think that's an objectification that is irrelevant. Um, we're just not going to get this. There's no this. It's all words for us. 
It's all words for the objectifying brain when it looks through the lens of objectification. There's nothing to get. There's, it's just all names. You, we cannot think of anything that doesn't have a name. It's impossible. Some names have physical counterparts, like rocks and water. Some things don't, like feelings, emptiness, love. Those are just ideas. And the brain combines things that have physical counterparts with things that don't and creates this swirling collage of irrelevance and tries to make sense of it using the very words that cause the confusion. Not everyone feels this way. One time I asked my wife, I said, a long time ago, I said, don't you wonder what's going on? Don't you wonder what's happening, who we are? And she thought for a while and said, no. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Most people oh, don't. Oh, oh, my goodness. I feel like an alien sometimes. Other people, <laughs> they're just like cruising and everything's. I Very love your fun. wife. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Michael, I got a question. So I've never found an objectified mind. Well, you can't. Oh, okay. Those are just ideas. You yeah. can't put them on the table. Yeah. Uh, my favorite, one of my favorite teachers was Jan Cox, and he came up with that, if you can't put it on the table. I, I say, it, if it can't be measured, it doesn't exist as doesn't have a physical counterpart. But anything you can think of that can't be put on the table or measured exists only as an idea, and it's your idea. It's your unique idea. We live in a world of unique ideas. Each of us are alone in a world of unique ideas. We are ultimately alone, and that is the the bugaboo of the human mind to the terror of being alone. Yeah. So I would say that an objectified mind is also an idea. Of course it is. Yeah. So yes. There's just these, I, there's nothing but sort of these empty ideas. Mm. Every conclusion every one of us has about the nature of reality exists only as our unique idea. Which has infinite meaning, so it cancels itself out to zero. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Truly, each of us has our own dictionary that's unique to us. I have a childhood uh, growing up in Wyoming and uh, with a raging alcoholic father. My world is totally different than yours. It's this brain's world. It's the only place the person exists. And it's alone in that world. This is not talked about in polite society. And even in non-dual circles, this doesn't come up. Our longing, this empty longing that we've had for as long as we can remember, that's never filled. We tried so many things to fill it. It can't be filled. It's life's longing, objectified. We long for things that don't exist, happiness, love companionship, soulmate, whatever. Our longing is objectified, and of course we can't fill it. It doesn't exist. There's nothing that can fulfill life's longing. The loneliness that we begin to feel sometimes and push away can be embraced as living in a beautiful, unique world of your own creation. Talking brain to brain now. My trees are different than yours. My dogs are different than yours. My cats, everything is different for me than it is for you. I can settle into this aloneness and somehow be mystified that we can talk to each other at all. I think that's the gift. I think we are the jewel. It doesn't last this long. If you're fortunate, your hair will be white like mine. It's hard to believe, I know. 
I go to the barber and I see this white hair accumulating on the ground and I laugh. How did I? It used to be black, like Michael's. <laughs> I used to be long. I had long hair when I had a mustache. Uh, now I'm an old man and all those are my memories. And they're starting to fade now. I'm starting to fade. My best friend is my age, a philosophy professor, and he's starting to fade, and I'm going to miss him um, if he dies before me. That's part of being human. We miss our loved ones, all those memories. They existed only as a memory in our mind anyway. That's as close as we'll ever get to anybody is the memory of them. Oh, I do ramble on. I'm going to be quiet. Thank you all for being here. Life longing for longing. Maybe there's no longing to begin with. Life not longing for life. Life not longing for anything. Life, just life. Life is longing. The deer in the forest is constantly longing for food, for mating, for whatever a deer longs for. Trees reach for the sun. Um, bacteria, certain bacteria long for the north and some long for the south. Um, it's life pulsating, pushing, mating, eating. Um, and life is sensuous and beautiful and lovely, except that's the way this brain sees it. But longing, this long. I asked Tim Cliss one time, I said, do you still long? He said, oh yeah, have the longing. Somebody said, I, that really makes me mad. Or yeah, they, she was mad because she thought the longing would go away. Mm. And it won't. I, I, I think the longing here is like a romanticizing, trying to put something on what just is. I mean, what just is what just is is not longing it cannot it doesn't need to be longing for anything complete whole now needs nothing and 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 and, and if it so chooses can play the game of longing <laughs> like what you just said it can do whatever it wants to do and play this wonderful 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 game of loving and longing and loving itself and joy doesn't need to doesn't need to no longing just 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 this just and this like i this is good enough you don't need to long long for what something missing something i don't know why are you here? Why are you at this meeting? I really don't know. Mm -hmm. It's like the love and passion for life, you know? It's beautiful. And, and why not? I know. It's playful. And also the the resistance being futile is because the resistance is freedom already. Free already. Everything. Everything free. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things Leela and I say to each other all the time is it's not in the words. No word is ever going to get it.
Is there anything beyond words? <laughs> it's singing in the words. It's singing as the words, shimmering as the ordinary, sitting in a chair, every every movement of the mm. face and hand, just everything. But yeah, the indescribable, but is the describing. It's so cool. <laughs> Yeah, that at, which can't be seen. Yeah. Yeah. At the risk of alerting the non-duality police, I would say that, like Jesus said, every jot and tittle. It's everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> oh, uh, Michael Markham, you asked if anything exists beyond words. Uh, I mean, I have memories that are pre pre language. So you call that pre language? It has it's a word. It is. <laughs> I can see nothing beyond our naming of it for us. There probably is. Well, there undoubtedly is. But. If you, if you try to, this idea that somehow words will take us to the edge and then we have to leap, um, that's all words. It's word salad. Uh, we'll never find this elusive whatever it is that we believe exists beyond words because there's nothing there. There's absolutely nothing for us as personas beyond labels. And the brain of most people are screaming, yes, there is. I can think of something beyond words. You ask them to tell you what it is, and they have words for it. We are a dictionary. We are the brain's dictionary. We are the brain's thesaurus. Uh, I think that's beautiful. I think it's so lovely to relax into the limitations of human cognition. Plasma physicists get all buggled up because the brain cannot objectify what they see. And they have names for it. And they get all, if you ever listen to them, they have these elaborate names. But they don't know what they're seeing. Uh, I asked a physics major in, in Berkeley what magnetism was. And he said, you know, we don't know. Measure <laughs> it. And I joke one time, I figured out, finally figured out what magnetism is. Is you put these two things together and they do a pushy pulley thing. <laughs> I figured it out. <laughs> Smart. We don't know. We don't know anything. All we have is words for things that don't exist. Except in the naming of them. Maybe we could say that all words are another name for this. You could, but this is just another word. It's a combination of all imaginary things. All imaginary things put together make one big imaginary thing. I love that. It's stuck like, in shadows. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, the infinite imagination with infinite potential. I don't know what potential is. It's just another <laughs> yeah, it's a stab in the dark. <laughs> it's it's a stacking of shadows is all words can do but that's okay bats have certain limitations we can't imagine a million bats can fly into a cave with clicking everybody's clicking clicking and all the babies are clicking clicking and the mother can find the bat in total or her baby in total darkness her own baby somewhere in that cave with these trillions of clicks going on we can't imagine how that's done and our reality we can't imagine what it is all we have is words for it 
there may I don't know if there's something beyond words there isn't for us I don't care anymore these memories are all word memories uh, they're thoughts combinations of words my childhood my adolescence lonely adolescence no friends didn't want them um uh, The yeah. morning you woke up in Las Vegas. Michael, I, I, I just want to be respectful of everybody's time. So oh, I'm, I'm going to, yeah, no worries. I'm going to bring the meeting to a close, but I really want to thank each and every one of you Patricia and Jenny, Michael, Dawn, Catherine, Leela, Anon, Agnes, Sander, who's no longer here. Thank you so much. Thank you. How wonderful. Thank you, Michael Thanks. and everyone. Thank you. Yay. Love you all. Thank you. Yay. I Thank can't do that. <laughs> Take care. Yay. Thank you. Beautiful. Bye. Bye.